at that time, close to home, was two episodes a week. And for me, it was the most invaluable training ground. The, the days we spent in the studios, we rehearsed in a hall in Maybe Road in Lower Hutt, and then recorded, I think, two days a week in the studio out at Avalon. And at that time, they had monitors everywhere, and they were quite willing to, to run things back and review. And by doing that, by watching what you had just done, for me, anyway, I have, I've had no training as an actor. I've just sort of, as I said, stumbled into it. And I've learned from doing it, I suppose. And in those early days at Avalon, working on Close to Home, that was the most valuable experience, was just seeing how it's done, becoming familiar with the camera. The camera is, is, is really a bit like another actor that you have to sort of accommodate into what you're doing. Um, there was the business of learning quickly as well um, each week to cope with the number of episodes that we did. Uh, <laughs> it really is ironical now to think that we thought we were working really hard, you know, doing two episodes a week. Since then I've done Shortland Street, which is just different, it's just different. It's the pace at which you work. Yeah, well. That was a joy to work with because uh, I was very familiar with a lot of the cast because I'd done some work at Circa Theatre um, as a writer and an actor, and um, it was a very, uh, it was a joyous group of people to work with. It was very funny. There was lots of laughter, obviously, and um, it was a creative process in that we had the script and people were contributing to it constantly and building and working and building on things. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought Gliding On was a great uh, comedy series. I auditioned just like everybody else. I think I auditioned for a couple of parts. There was one that I particularly fancied, the part of Bernie, detective who was a bit of a scoundrel. Uh, I told you I was a troublemaker at school. I, I identified very strongly with Bernie, but the way you see yourself is not necessarily the way that other people see you. And from the auditions, they saw me as, as a leader of men, which is something that I am definitely not. <laughs> I don't know, there's, there's something Plato said, you know, really smart people avoid responsibility at all costs. <laughs> and I think I subscribe to that. I was very fortunate in that I was introduced to a mentor, a police inspector named Grant O'Fee, who is now district commander down in Nelson, I think. Um, and he was great, I, and I spent some time with him, and, and I, th I looked at his character. We hit it off really well, and that evening that I spent with him is one of the most exciting evenings of my life. There was just not a, not a moment's boredom that we were moving from incident to incident and it, I realised how busy the police are and it just, I imbued some sort of sense of what it would be like to be a police inspector and I try to, to pass that on to the screen. I don't know how it happens. It's a mystery, as they say in Shakespearean love. There are things like driving down Taranaki Street in a police car and the way that the traffic move away from you. I don't know that we'd be allowed to do that anymore, but it was just me driving a cop car with flashing lights going down Taranaki Street. Another time I can remember I was in police uniform walking to a vehicle to take me to location from wherever I changed and I passed a lawnmower shop where a, a, a poor distraught man had just had a lawnmower stolen off the back of his car and he wanted to tell me, the police inspector, about it. I was made up, uh, you know, I, but I looked and he couldn't see past the uniform. I tried several times to explain to him, I am not a policeman, I'm an actor dressed up. And he just kept on telling me about the lawnmower that had just been stolen. And in the end I had to just walk away, so I don't know what happened there. <laughs> The production values, the, the atmosphere on the set, on the floor, just the way the work it was done, you know, the attention to detail. Shooting it on 35 mil always has you know, the added sort of, added sort of frisson. Um, 
No, it, it was really good. It's great working with someone like Kevin Sorbo. I've always thought that the lead actor in the show, you know, leads by example, and he was, he was exemplary. Jason was the one I played for a great many uh, episodes, and so that gave me some sort of continuity, something to work on from time to time. The other guy was just a badass who gave uh, Hercules a bad time, and uh, oh, I got to use a whip there, so. It, uh, bad guys are really nice, fun to play, you know? But um, as a career move, Jason was a better option. <laughs> I think I was going to Shortland Street initially for three weeks to do multiple sclerosis. I was there to play a disease. It's not a character. It's the way I felt about it. And then my agent said, oh, they quite like you. They'd, they'd like to sort of stretch it out a little bit more. And it got it's stretched out for about another year, I think. I can't remember exactly, but I, I wasn't there for all the time. I'd just go there and do a couple of weeks and then I'd come home again. The guy was dying. I mean, there's no, <laughs> there's no getting away from there. But you know, and and it was sort of surfing, the occasional reprieve. Um, the, yeah, I, I enjoyed the relationships with the daughters, the girls. Um, the marriage was obviously shaky. It, it was interesting. It was all quite interesting. But also, there was a whole lot of stuff going on in my life that I was having to cope with at that time. It was a very difficult time for me. I enjoyed Spartacus. Uh, it's nice to do a costume drama again, you know? Um, you find such attention to detail among the people who are doing the costuming, the people who are doing the makeup, and you, you can learn so much from them, you know? If you're going into the series, as I was for three or four or three episodes, I think. Um, so, you know, I learned a lot about the Roman life. Uh, I got to work with John Hanna, who, and it was a very enjoyable experience working with him, actually. Um, the language in which uh, it was written is a kind of Shakespearean language. They, 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 there are deliberate anachronisms put into the language and, and odd syntaxes which I, I enjoyed struggling with and learning. Yeah, and then delivering in a way that gets the meaning across. If I did, the, there's a place behind the studios in Stone Street where they take you and they hang you by your thumbs for an hour, an hour and a half, if, if you tell people anything about the production. You just and, did. And, oh, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done for. <laughs> I can feel nothing but astonishment when I look at my CV and think, did I really do all that? Because I, I don't think of myself as that person, you know? It's just these jobs come along and say, yeah, I'll do that. And they give me a script and I become engrossed in the script. I, I lose myself in the script, you know? And I go off and I do the job and, and that's it. And then I come home and there's a real world where I have a garden, I play golf, and I have two lovely granddaughters who I spend my time with. Three Gs. <laughs> My career, I don't know, I'm at the end of my career. I, I, I feel, but I felt for a long time that maybe I'm at the end of my career.